Uh, joint stereo, stereo or mono? What would you recommend? Uh, I'd recommend joint stereo if you're able, if you're. Yep. Machine is capable of doing it. Yep. Recording. Machine. Now. Technology <sighs> has been recorded. Technology. Technology is your friend. It appears you're using an MP3 Skype recorded.exe with Skype. To see how third party applications work out with Skype, please see our facts and questions. Our facts and questions. Uh, well, I, for one, certainly know I'm looking forward to the comic. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'm hoping people like it. I think it was funny. Well, yeah. considering the um, good feedback that the show's been getting so far, the comic books is going to be a like a surefire hit with everyone. <laughs> well, the the good feedback is relative. I find that uh, there's good feedback from some circles, and there are other people who just hate everything. Welcome to the Sonic fan base. I was going to say this. <laughs> <laughs> Hello everybody and welcome to the Sonic Boom commentaries. Uncut, either in video form that you're watching it on LMC or alternatively you're listening to the podcast version on from iTunes, in which case thank you so much for subscribing either way. I'm Kevin of course, uh, joining me today we have Jono. Hello, Hello Jono. I'm Jono, I'm high on chocolate. He's high on chocolate and life. And life. Absolutely. We have Tom. Hi oh yes, I'm back. I survived the fall from a brick wall. You survived a fall from a brick wall. Yeah. How, how tall was the wall? About five foot. Yeah. Were you cosplaying as Humpty Dumpty at the time or something? Or? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I was just trying out my new um, exercise routine for Knuckles. Uh, there's some parkour there as knuckles. I went desperately wrong. Um, <laughs> we uh, we are joined by the head honcho of the Sonic team, of course. We, the, so the Sonic team. The Sonic <laughs> team. <laughs> You've been promoted. <laughs> Congratulations, <laughs> Jamie. Congratulations, Jamie. Which means it's now all your fault. Um, yeah. um, but yes, so the, the Sonic show, I should say, which is of course Jay. How are you? Thank you man. I'm all right. This is my second week in a row that I showed up. Hey, I know, me. It's brilliant. I should get like an attendance reward or something. Mm. I give you a gold star. Yay! Move to, move to, the, head, star move to the head of the class. You can take Donnie's <laughs> seat. Uh, but we are also joined by a guest. Now, last week everyone was going nuts because we had Mike Pollock in, uh, of course, very famous voice actor, voice of Dr. Eggman in Sonic Boom. How could we possibly go better? Well... Well, we have somebody who is not just a voice actor, for he has voiced in Sonic Boom uh, one of the best characters there is, by the name of Comedy Chimp. We have the person responsible for the upcoming Sonic Boom comic volume 5, as well as the showrunner and co-executive producer of Sonic Boom. We've got Bill Freiberger here, everybody! That was very, very impressive. <laughs> <laughs> I almost think I'm important now. It makes boring from last week, which I got from Mike. So, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right, so hello, Bill. Welcome to the commentaries. Howdy. I'm happy to be here. I'm quite a fan. I listen every week. Oh, we're very honoured. We're, we're very honoured. We, we 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 will watch yours every week as, as well. So. <laughs> sub for sub. Sub for sub. <laughs> Ah, oh, yes. So, um, thank you for joining us today um, for episode 15, Aim Low. That's, that's the uh, motto for the entire project. <laughs> <laughs> there are that fans out there true. going, so it was true! <laughs> hmm. um, but of course, it's not the gap. I mean, but, so, wow, thank you very much for coming on, as I say. Um, being so being the, being the showrunner um, and also the co-executive producer, some um, I lost all of that. I didn't hear any of it. I, I think I think it's my voice. I do apologize. Um, being say so the, the showrunner and the co-executive producer, a lot of people out there won't know exactly what that entails. Could you um, elaborate on it for, for for those people? Sure. Um, basically, the showrunner. Um, 
means that I'm responsible for every aspect of the show, along with uh, my co-showrunner, Evan Bailey, who's the one of the executive producers of the show. And we start out by hearing pitches or coming up with stories, and we figure out what the stories are going to be. We then shepherd the writers to write their outlines of the stories that they pitched to us. We then get the notes, compile them, give the notes to the writers. The writers will then write a draft. Sometimes the writers will write a second draft, usually not. From the point that, they, that they're done with their script, I do a rewrite and then um, Evan and I do a rewrite together. Once the rewrite is done, it forks off, it branches off in two directions. One is the people in France who have given us notes up until this point, and we've, you know, it's been a collaboration with them. They start, once they have a finished script, they start doing the storyboards. And at the same time, we record the actors' voices. Then Evan record, takes the actors' recordings and cuts them up into what's called a radio play, which is basically the audio version of what the show will eventually be. Once the storyboards are done, we look at them, approve them, and give notes on them. Then the um, French studio, we do, takes the audio and puts the story, edits the storyboard to the audio. And that becomes what's called the animatic. And that's the starting point for the animation. After that, the um, animation... The Oh. Have we lost Just to the animatic? Hello? Hello. Oh, sorry, we lost you. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm, I seem to be losing you occasionally too. How much of that did you get? Uh, um, animation or. Oh, we got, <laughs> we got. oh, so it was the. I was talking about the animatic. Mm -hmm. was the yes. last thing. Okay, so the animatic is then edited, you know, by Evan and myself, uh, you know, or we give notes on it. We, we tweak the, the editing. And then it goes to. Um, Korea to be animated and we get what's called a layout which is no not a lot of movement but what all the shots are going to be in in CG from there we give notes on that then they slowly change the static shots into animated shots and then the special effects are added then we edit a final version then sound effects are added then music is added then it's all mixed together and Evan and I supervise every stage of this process and the whole process from the first time a writer comes to us till the thing airs is about a year. Wow. wow. That's actually uh, one thing... So, um, think, so think about that next time you criticize it. <laughs> <laughs> one thing I was, I was actually going to say about that was um, all the things that you detailed mm -hmm. there, that's a, evidently there's a whole load of production that goes into that. Even with all that, the turnaround is still remarkably quite quick, given everything that goes into it. I, I guess that's one way to look at it, because, yes, it, it is a lot of stuff, and it's a lot of stuff to constantly be uh, pouring over and trying to get right and trying to fix little things, you know, little timings. And, you know, you'd be surprised. I find, I think Walter Murch, the great editor, said the difference between something working and not working can be a frame. Mm-hmm. And that's yeah. a lot of what we're dealing with when we do yeah. this, is just getting it exactly right, getting the sound effect exactly right, getting the cut exactly right, with the hope that it's the funniest it can be. It you know, like sometimes... Some... I'm sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say, it sounds like something that maybe... Uh, I know a lot of people have taken quite harshly with and criticism with regarding the, the um, video game. Maybe um, those who, who actually uh, worked on maybe Rise of Lyric... And um, Shatter Crystal could have t developed on how to make sure things were better presented than how it did come out, unfortunately. Yeah, I, you know, I don't want to criticize them too harshly. Mm. Uh, you know, I, I, I know that um, in many things, you know, you have like many great directors who've made many great films and then they have one bad film. And they're still talented. And so you never know what went wrong. You never know what the, where the problem was. Maybe they ran out of time. Maybe it was a. So I, I can't criticize. You know, having done this so much, mm. I can't. I can look at it and say, you know what? I know they worked on it. I don't know what went wrong, and I really don't feel like I'm in a position to really point a finger. I know there were certain things that weren't. Um, there were certain things that weren't. Um, you know, finished as well as maybe the fans would have liked, and they they did redo it. 
Um, you know, yeah. so I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, one thing I, I have. No, sorry, go. S- sure. go for it, John. Yeah. Well, one thing. <laughs> well, one thing I know for sure from um, editing stuff myself is that you know you you put what you think is your best into it and. You can do that, but you don't always hit it, and that's just generally a fact of how stuff tends to work with anything creative. Yes, I have and, a question. You know, oh yes, sorry, go yes, ahead. Please. I was, was going to say. say you know, <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say you you can't you know a lot of people just you know are very critical and you know once the game comes out or the TV show comes out or the movie comes out and e- even if great people worked on it, it's no good. Yeah, you go. Don't see it. You know, it it didn't mm. work. It doesn't yeah. deserve your money, but it's no one's fault. Very often, you know, this yes. this desire, especially on forums and stuff, to just go in for the kill, by a lot of people who've never really done anything. You can say your opinion. You can say, yeah, no, I didn't like it. I thought this didn't work. This could have been better. But at the end of the day, the that kind of viciousness about it can be problematic because. You don't know what went into it. You don't know what guy mortgaged his house to get it done. You don't mm. like it. You shouldn't give your good hard-earned money for it. But n- neither should you be, um, you know, venomous about it. The, there is that disconnect, I think, between, uh, and this has always been the case, I would say, between fans and and their idea of what goes into making something and, and the processes involved. As you, as, as you, as you said, there's, there's a lot that goes on. There's a lot more than people people think. It's not a case of just, you know, boom, animating something, boom, putting putting the voices to it, and then that's it, done. Uh, it's, it's like step by step by step by step. Lots of, lots of different processes. Um, I mean, well, one thing I, I wanted to quickly ask uh, before we... we uh, go on with other things is um, with regards to to Sonic Team because obviously I mean I assume that you have to go you had to go through some kinds of approval on the episodes as well did you? Oh sure, um, there are a lot of people who are saying this. This is a big multinational production, you know, and the networks have say and the studios have say and you know Sega has say in this stuff, and a lot of it is negotiation. Um, People always say, why aren't there more good writers in Hollywood? There are so many bad movies come out. And I would say to you that I'm sure every one of those movies started with a good script by a good writer. And things went wrong. Hmm. You know, so just how like much, with the, Excuse me? I was just saying, how much does a, something with like a licensed character, the work in that differ to something like Drawn Together where you don't have any properties that belong to other people? Um, Is it well, usually different or...? Well, yeah, of course it's different because there are things we did on Drawn Together. Obviously, it was also an adult show, so that's a, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a separate I, issue. But I love that program, I'm, by the way. Oh, thank you. Mm. I enjoyed doing it. it. The thing about that show, I mean, we had, this, there are scenes with Captain Hero where he's got a rolled-up carpet and there are feet sticking out of it and he's digging a grave. <laughs> you know, so you couldn't do that if it were Superman. It, it, it would then transcend parody. But are you guys, like, always conscious of, like, with Sonic, are you always conscious of what like, Sega think, or do you not let it bother you too much in terms of stopping well, what your we creativity? Be, we don't have to be conscious of what they think because they tell us. <laughs> you know, so we do what we do, and we present what we present, and then they can say, oh, well, we don't think that Sonic would do this, or we'd yeah. prefer if, if it went this way. Yeah. You know, and that's all legitimate concern because it's their... IP and it's their branding and it's all you know. I I don't know necessarily you would say it's their mascot, but it's pretty close. I mean, yeah. it's like Mickey. Oh dear, Skype is free, everyone. So, yeah. <laughs> corporate symbol. When he became the corporate symbol, he hmm. stopped. You know, they stopped using him as a as that kind of character that he was in the early cartoons. And so we always have to be mindful of who Sonic and all these other characters are that we don't harm what they are and you know that's a responsibility when you make this and you certainly don't want to be you know harming them you know I certainly don't but I, I like to have an interesting varied um, different kinds of stories to tell you know I like to think of this Sonic as like another string to the bow really as, a, as opposed as opposed to anything that he, he is that other branch for you to be able to tell those different kinds of stories like you say um 
and 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 Jamie to to I I can vouch Jamie that uh, if Sonic Team don't like something, they're not exactly shy about saying. <laughs> I know <laughs> I've had my run-ins as well. Yeah, Sonic <laughs> we, and stuff, yeah. Oh, yeah, saying, yeah, we both have, haven't we? Actually, we've, yeah, we've, 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 we've all had conversations with Sega. Oh now. god, yeah. <laughs> right, and you know, and and again, they're looking out for their brand, and they have concerns. Yeah, it's of like course, yeah. they could they could have a um, a note on that story. I would I don't want to do that story. Sonic would not behave that way. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. And they also have notes. Sometimes Sonic's eyes don't look right. The animation is, you know, so it would be the littlest thing to the biggest thing. Oh, wow. They're making sure Sonic is Sonic. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Sonic's eyes aren't right. Oh, oh no. no. <laughs> <laughs> but but, but that's an important thing that if it becomes off model, you know, and, and if it becomes an important thing for merchandising and for all kinds mm. of things, you don't want off model stuff getting out there. Mm. Generally, I mean, I love off model stuff. I love like cartoons from the '60s where you know, a toy for Fred Flintstone looked nothing like Fred Flintstone. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that makes me so happy. But you know, from Hanna Barbera's point of view, maybe they would have liked for it to have looked more like Fred. So you don't get so much of that now. Yeah. We, yeah, don't, yeah, we don't have we don't have um, Sonic smoking camel cigarettes before the news or anything like that either. <laughs> Interesting avenue to play the franchise. We, 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 we have him selling insurance instead, don't we? <laughs> um, if I can ask another question of you, Bill. Um, one very interesting thing I heard you notice is that you know you got to keep all these certain parties happy. I noticed that you also mentioned um, the network happy as well so what kind of things are you know are they interested in i'm guessing you know because they're going to be one putting the show on so what kind of things do they sort of ask of and what kind of things do they require uh, actually the networks both the french networks and cartoon network have been very easy to work with um mostly the issues tend to be standards and practices issues um where they might not want a certain kind of thing because uh, a big thing in kids tv and I learned this going back to when I was on Pee Wee's Playhouse, is imitatable act. No one wants to put something in the show that some kid is going to then do and then hurt themselves. I would feel terrible if, if someone repeated something that was really dangerous and got hurt as a result. So that's a big thing that, that they're concerned with in the notes. Um, I'm trying to think what else they... Because, um, again, we, it hasn't been that bad. We got a couple of notes, actually... Um, from the French show, from the French uh, network, about things that they felt we we put in the show that wouldn't play in France, and since it's a joint venture, yeah. they didn't want this to just be an American, and rightfully so, just be an American show that they're glomming onto. They wanted us to not do certain things, and some of them are big, and some of them are silly, but you know they're still important. Um, for example, there was a lot of discussion. Oh, I was just going to give away an episode. I can't do that. <laughs> Damn it. I was, was given an example from an episode that had We were so close. Yet. But, you know, they'll ask for something and they'll... And they actually let us do it, which is kind of nice of them. In the episode where... Um, Dave, in the Dave the Intern episode, Double Doomsday, mm -hmm. there's that peanut butter... And Eggman asks Sonic to make a sandwich for him. He makes a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. The French... The French network felt peanut butter and jelly was really American. And the reason they let us do it was because the joke of it was Eggman had such precision of how it had to be made that we couldn't think of another sandwich that worked that well. Where Eggman says, you put peanut butter on both slices of bread so the jelly doesn't make it soggy. Uh, it was a, you know, we wanted to make it very finicky. We wanted to make it a very finicky thing. And peanut butter and jelly happened to work. And so they let us do it for that reason. That's quite interesting. I hadn't even Very thought cool. about the fact that you've got a whole second network. You forget. I've... Yeah, they've been really good. Both networks have been really good. Um, and, and so it's, it's been a pleasure to do the show in that regard because we're doing a lot of what we want to do, which doesn't always happen in, in TV. A lot of times there are a lot of people giving notes and a lot of people who have problems with stuff and a lot of rewrites. But I find when Evan and I do our final draft, it ends up in the show. We, there's not a lot of oh, we got to cut out Act Two entirely. We got to we got to rewrite this whole section. Very rarely, the notes can be addressed. I find when I take a pass to addressing the notes, it's a day, half a day of just tweaking certain things. Never throwing the script out and starting over. 
so it's that in that regard, it's been a pleasure both on the part of um, you know Guli and Canel G and on Cartoon Network. Uh, going back to going to that back to the notes just then that you mentioned, um, do you get a similar thing, or did you get a similar thing? I should say with the with the with the issue of the Boom comic that uh, is coming out. At all? Um, actually, it was also pretty easy doing the Boom comic. Um, I, Archie was very easy to work with. Paul Kaminsky, the um, editor that I was working with, was was just great. Um, maybe they gave me a lot of leeway because they figure I know the show really well. But I don't know. I mean, it was, again, not a lot of notes on the rewrite. And it was just a lot of fun to do. And, and the art, I was just I was blown away by. I really enjoyed. The front cover looks... If it all looks yeah. like, it's so good. <laughs> the art is really good. I'm looking forward to it. I was hoping, because it was supposed to come out March 4th, and it got pushed back... March 11th now. Yeah. Yeah, I was hoping that it would be out for this, so we could, you know, because they, you know, bef about three days before they usually release the first six pages or so mm. on the internet. And I thought, then you could see some of the artwork mm. that's really a lot of fun. There's a great um, two-page spread in the middle of the entire Oktoberfest that's just phenomenal that I, I want to get framed. But I don't know if I'm going to frame the comic book or see if I can get some high resolution artwork and take it to a store and get it really made into a nice I, I saw you said in an interview that you wanted to um, frame that two page film yeah. <laughs> I think people are going to like it it's a, it's a lot of fun um, and it's a perfect example of a story I could do in the comic book that I couldn't do on the show because of the vastness of the sets we needed and also because there were costume changes a costume change in CG yeah. is a big <laughs> undertaking and so if we want to put Eggman in a different outfit, that's a, that's a, a new character. That's basically mm. us, you know, and if our budget is for two new characters per episode or one new character per episode, wherever it is, you might not want to waste it on giving um, Eggman a, a different outfit. But in the comic book, I could do all kinds of stuff. I could build all yeah. kinds of sets, mm. and it was very liberating in that regard. It's, it's great. Then it's great. Then you've got those two platforms that then can then um, complement each other. And that's if if one story is too big for is too big in a way. I'm sorry, you're breaking of, up there a little bit. <coughs> sorry, um, in that you've got that in the, the complementary nature then of, of of the comics and the show, and that they can sort of exchange stories in a way potentially if, if one's if if one's too big for the comic or one's too um, expansive for for the show and that they can sort of cross over in a way and you, you've got that ability to still have that story um but just show it in a slightly different medium that can accommodate it better right right i mean i that's certainly i think because we have some of the writers myself Denton and han uh, my son sam freiberger is doing a comic book i think those we can all do stories that we can pitch to the show and then if it can't work on the show for some reason we can pitch it as a comic book mm. i don't know if it, if it can work as easily the other way mm. very true although i'm the guy who hears the pitches so i guess anything <laughs> you pitch to yourself <laughs> yeah. well i meant other writers like um people involved with the comic book mm. if they have an idea that doesn't work for the comic book that might work for the show they could contact me and i could and maybe we could make that work I, you know. Ian, Ian, uh, yeah. that, Ian that, that's a hint, fantastic. Ian. <laughs> Ian is fantastic. Um, I've been doing for the comic books. I don't know um, if I mean, if you're familiar with within the comic books. I always have like a little one panel strip. Oh yes, the, um, yeah. uh, off panels. Yes, but I've been doing a bunch of those for Archie as well, and I've been doing them for the world's. Uh, the Worlds Unite crossover. So mm -hmm. I got all of the outlines for all the issues. And it is a massive, oh. massive undertaking. And Ian it just did a brilliant job of, um, you know, charting all this stuff over the course of, I think, 16 issues. I mean, it's just masterful. I mean, it's like, it's like writing a feature, the amount... Mm. It's it's a it's a shame Tanner's not here because I know Tanner's a massive fan of the Archie comics yeah. and him to hear this he'd probably be over the moon. <laughs> uh, oh, this, yeah, this is going to be 
this is going to be quite spectacular, I think. Yeah. All the stuff that's going on and all the surprises that are in there, that, that are in store for people. Quite, quite exciting. Awesome. Right. Um, can I just bring up a quick question, actually? Um, sure. Bill, I remember you, uh, a little while ago, you mentioned about um, the, the networks in accommodating both for both the American and the French um, chat networks. Uh-huh. And uh, am I right in saying that the on the French side of things, they've aired the episodes in a different order compared to what the American network's been doing recently? Um, yes, but it, it's more than that even because the script order is different than the production order and is different than the broadcast order. So all of that stuff is all mixed up in a giant, you know, um, random pile. And so, yes, they are airing them differently, but that's only because of what's getting done when and the fact I believe they're airing two at a time and Cartoon Network is only airing one at a time. So that's a big part of it. Mm. Um. Do we have any feedback, Kevin? We do. I'm glad you. I'm glad you mentioned that, Jamie, because this. Um, so um, we had did have a load of comments on the videos, also on uh, SonicBoomCommentaries.com, which uh, you can get the uh, podcast version of this from, and leave a message there for us. Uh, and uh, so from uh, the previous episode. Uh, Edward Elric says Ella for Sonic Boom after Mike Pollock bringing Ella back um, <laughs> I, for, for one for one night only I think it should stay one night only actually yes I don't think <laughs> that should ever happen again <laughs> uh, uh, yeah as nice as it was to have an additional strong female character in that show no that's <laughs> just not, 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 no, not Ella. Ella's had her day. Yes. Everybody. Um, and stay in Sonic X. Yes, yeah, stay in Sonic X. <laughs> Sonic X, you don't need any cro- more crossing. Oh, Although I've actually got a comparison question, which I need to ask Bill later, if I, if I recall. Um, Yellow Star, who you, may, who you guys may remember from last week, said, another mm-hmm. great episode, guys. Thanks for reading out what I commented. So you'll be doubly thankful that I'm reading this out now um, it's, always, it's always a pleasure yeah, it's always a pleasure to hear from Mike um, I thought I had whilst listening was that surely a birthday episode must come up eventually and since Sonic and Eggman share a birthday would there be jealous party crashing which of course is true technically isn't it um, also Sticks laughed so hard she had teary eyes in one scene yes she did that was actually some really nice animation that. I don't know Sonic and Eggman Birthday shenanigans? Um, no birthday episodes in the first season. In the first I will season. Oh, you bet. Oh, yeah. Oh, actually, well, actually I'm going to interrupt the question. Okay, can we get? Can we draw a line under this? Because there seems to be a lot of confusion. Has Sonic Boom been renewed for se- for a second season? No, the fifty-two episodes that are already in production in various stages of production is what Cartoon Network was talking about when they said that they because they have enough episodes to take us almost into september now they would have to pick up the show before that if they wanted anything beyond there but they're talking about a full year of sonic based on the 52 that we've already done Mm. so there really has not been a um an official pickup yet Mm. so so their 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 announcement whatever it was 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 more just a case of we have the show for the next year period as opposed to for 2015 yeah as, as, yeah. Well, too, as, okay, as opposed to okay that's clear <laughs> yeah they, they were basically saying we have the show for 2015 okay. that's it now okay. everyone can stop yes. asking now again yeah, now <laughs> look there it is straight from as high as you could possibly go with this thing okay <laughs> right um and, th- and that's just for now i mean that of course yeah. could change any moment mm. Um, Because they do need to pick it up to to move on. But yes, that's what they were referring to. Brilliant. I I wanted to be really precise in my answer. (laughs) And literally, as soon as this recording ends, Bill's going to get a receiver (laughs) call saying, we want to renew for a second season. And then I'll announce that too. Absolutely. (laughs) And I'm not saying there isn't something possibly forthcoming. I'm just saying that's what they were referring to. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Um... Sunrose um, says, uh, do a commentary sometime with Roger Craig Smith if you can, please. Um, well, he's very busy. We'd love to, but he's very busy. <laughs> he's very busy, man. Very busy. Actually, we all keep trying. Actually, on the topic of like having other people join us, other than obviously having Mike and the, the grand Bill himself, <laughs> it would... 
Um, between us lot here, do you think we'll be able to persuade or just like negotiate with um, other voice actors, perhaps to join us? Of or course. Blackmail them. <laughs> you, t- Tom, you do not realise the secret negotiations going on in the background between mm. me and myself. Jamie, the last time you said something like that, you ended up selling me on the market for an evening. That's true. It's the only way I can get guests on. You could have just at least gave me just just a heads up. Tom, Tom, for the good of the show, okay? For the good of the show. Shala Boykin also agreed with with Roger. I'm still heartbroken from missing him coming into the the SAC anime convention. I'm so sorry to hear that uh, we'll try we'll try but there are there's lots of people and, and uh, we've, i mean this show and the previous show obviously was is pretty very very informative about the series and how things have been made so i, I do hope we, we, we can arrange some something or the other i'm sure there'll be more guests in the future but you've, you've got even if we don't have guests you have us in the meantime take that obviously who you come here for no they don't it, it, it's, it's, it's all it's all jamie <laughs> all jamie I have we? For you. Have we suddenly gained another person? In this chat? I I don't know. Is there a Donny there? Maybe. Ah. Hey. Ah. ah. There is a lurking Donny. I'm not gonna. Not, let's be fair, Donny. We have a guest, and you're really late. <laughs> 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 you know, it it's like showing up to a dinner party an hour into the <laughs> bloody main course. Come on. Oh, but wasn't the wasn't the uh, Oh, what Sonic character you quiz has something to do with a party or something? <laughs> well, we'll we'll get on to that. In, well, I think we'll get on to that in the post show. Post show, yeah. Um, but but yes, my lords, ladies and gentlemen, Donny <laughs> and no, his no, and no, his no. part and his partner, news. Yeah. <laughs> Hi guys, Hello, apologies for the weather. Right. Anyway, Don- Apologies for the late entrance. Donny Donny has been announced. Right. That's fine, Donny. You're sacked. It's fine. Uh, Moving along. <laughs> Right, uh, <laughs> Adrian Gonzalez says Sonic's laughing is not even diabolical; it's diabolically adorable. Uh, Sonic, okay. Uh, hmm? I said okay. <laughs> <laughs> As uh, laughing man in, in his uh, body. The yeah, anime. Everyone, everyone commented on the actors, but I, I would like to join in that, uh, you know, that praise and, and really talk about how great the actors are on this show, except for maybe one. Um, <laughs> but they, those guys did such a good job playing each other. And you know, it's interesting, I, I, not to talk about last week's show, because we have this week's show to worry about. Um, I was unaware, everyone seems to be commenting, it was great that you didn't switch voices. And it never occurred to me for a second to switch voices. That wouldn't make any sense to me, that, the, that Eggman's voice would be coming out of Sonic's body. I think it was done the right way, that you had that brief moment right at yeah. the start, where you were hearing inside his head. Just, and I think it did a good job of establishing yeah. this, the switchover. Yeah, but then, Sonic's then internal monologue was Sonic. Yeah. Right, right. And which, which makes sense to me, but I, I, I didn't know the trope was to do it the other way. I never, it had just never occurred to me that you would do it any other way but this. But the thing is, if you had done it the other way, it would have probably caused a lot more confusion in a sense. Yeah, At least I the, the script was probably confusing enough as it was. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, right, we, you, yeah, if I remember right, I. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, if I remember rightly, I think I remember it being done the other way, you know, that way. In um, It was an old episode of The Flintstones, I think, where everybody changed voices, and every character retained their voice, so you'd hear Fred's voice coming out of Wilma's mouth for some reason. I don't know. Right, I guess that's, you know, there's certainly some comedy in that as well. Mm. And maybe in that instance, it's because all the characters knew they'd switched bodies, and so then it's a way of everyone, you know, knowing who everyone is. Yeah. Um, but if you want it to be a secret, the other voice coming out, then you have to ask yourself, what, can't Amy hear that that's Eggman's voice coming out of Sonic? And it becomes a very different story. Yeah. We wanted the story of Sonic, obviously, once again, back in his body. But Eggman is kind of happy with the way things are. So we needed to do it in a way that didn't tip off to anyone. Yeah. And I, I guess people might say, you know, Eggman in Sonic's body, his behavior was so insane they should have known immediately. Mm. Yeah. Perhaps the fact they didn't know Knuckles' name could have tipped it off. <laughs> the, the, the behavior and the, the vocal inflections, which I, I went on about a bit last week, I think that's a, that's a much more cleverer and ultimately funnier way to go than to, to have it um, the way that everyone sort of seems to for some reason. The animation as well. 
Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, and, and, and obviously I agree because that's the way I did it. But the other thing that some people are saying, and it's an interesting thing to, you know, to get the, the feedback on this, is couldn't people tell the way Sonic was behaving that he wasn't Sonic? And I guess if you're someone who watches... It's happening again. World, two people switched minds like that. Even if the person was acting funny, your first instinct, because it doesn't really happen, your instinct would never be, oh, clearly Eggman's in Sonic's body. Yeah. They and would just think the Sonic's gone mad. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of the premise we were working with, was it would take a while to catch on, even if the person was misbehaving, because there's no precedent for it. Hmm. Plus, Knuckles and would that's... never, ever catch on. No, Knuckles would never, ever catch on. <laughs> and then everyone said, oh, as soon as Tails shows up, they, um, they everyone believes him. Well, yeah. yeah, because Tails is coming from a scientific thing of just having studied the situation. And we had a, it was the end of the show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> time, dictates, <laughs> time dictates. Time yeah. dictates sudden believing. And um, then ending. Absolutely. <laughs> like, uh, a, a few more bits. Uh, a couple of people mentioned that they actually, it, was, it was actually a, a similar plot was done in Sonic X comic number 37 well, first of all well that, done for knowing the exact comic, comic. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, like I say, the, the people who actually commented on this are have most brilliant names we've got Vexatron Primal <laughs> um, and also and this and also uh, Alan and Greg if you do if you return to Hedgehog Abbey I please include this character as as like some sort of visiting German aristocrat because the name of the other person was Speedy von Gofast. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> that would just be absolutely perfect. Um, if you're not sure about what Hedgehog Abbey is, stick around for the episode commentary. Uh, Ice Psycho Doodle says, by far uh, the best episode I have ever seen. That includes Satam 2, which is very high praise. <laughs> Uh, also, that and Eggman watching Eggman. I want that to be a thing. Eggman let's playing Sonic. <laughs> yeah. Well, technically, Eggman has played has played Sonic before because we go back to Sonic Colors, and uh, that's what uh, the bonus thing was all about. Uh, the, the bonus game with the uh, hedgehog, the Sonics with the antennae and the blue and the red head drop. Not forgetting that oh, he right. also had a Dreamcast with various games in, it, in Sonic yes, Unleashed. He did. Yes. Buried in that egg egg Excuse me. He's a total gamer. Yeah. Right. I think it is time. There is there is another question, but we'll get that to that post show uh, because it's one to, it's one for a lot of discussion. So why why don't you ask it now and then we'll answer it at the post show so people have a, will have a hook. Yes, I like yes. this idea. I Go on, Kev. I like this idea. Do you work in television? This <laughs> 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 is good. All right, so. Uh, Robert Robert Lino, hello by the way, says I I wonder which of the Sonic Show members I should switch bodies with. Following the following the meteor, who would you switch bodies with, fellow viewers? Well, first start, I wouldn't switch bodies with mine at the moment. It's full of disease, um, and, you, you, and you don't know where it's been. But <laughs> but uh, who would you guys you guys here uh, switch bodies with? We'll answer. After the episode, which is of course the main All reason right. why you're here. Dun, dun, dun. Right. <laughs> um, uh, do uh, so. All the Sonic Show guys, you have the episode up. I hope. I have yep. got the episode yep. up and ready via its yeah. totally legitimate sourcing. Of course. Yes. <laughs> um, Bill, one would assume that you have the episode. <laughs> I do indeed, and uh, it's queued up right to the first frame of the. Sonic running of the opening titles. Absolutely fantastic. Okay. Uh, right. So, uh, if everyone's ready, I'll give I'll give a three, two, one, click, and then obviously on click start. <laughs> oh, just before we do that, <laughs> if for any reason, because clearly Skype is treating us very nicely, mm -hmm. if for any reason, um, Bill, you cut out, we'll just we'll just keep we'll just go with it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Don't worry about it, because um. It's been playing up today, but that's what you get with free software. So, yeah. I wonder, I'm wondering if that's audio levels making the mic cut out. If it's, if it's too loud. Skype's not that clever. That's a Google thing. Mm. Curse you, Google and Skype for not working properly. It, 
Hey, at least they're not guilt, uh, guilt tripping us into keeping it. We can always get a better mm. software or something. <laughs> nah, nah, nah. That, let's, that's let's not even go there. A wonderful, not... We could have a wonderful piece of Eggman technology. That's very true. <laughs> anyway, go ahead, guys. Sorry. Right. Just thought I'd add okay, that so, um, everybody ready? Yep, and, good to go. And three, two, one. Go.